A few weeks ago, I released a video that as part of that solution included a biro and lambda combination. Lots of people responded saying, I really need to know more about what this does. Other people said, well, can we use scan? How about reduce? Maybe map might be a better option. The truth is there's just too many options for some scenarios. So in this video, we're comparing and contrasting those functions, seeing how they compare and when we need to use them for different situations. So if you're ready, let's go. In this example, the data is a little meaningless, but hopefully that makes it easy to understand what's happening with each function. We have a table with item, quarter and value columns. From this, I have already created a dynamic array report showing item, quarters and values. I6 uses the unique function on the item column. J5 uses the unique and transpose functions on the quarter column and J6 uses the sum ifs to return the value based on the spill ranges of I6 and J5. They are our two calculation scenarios. Now let's go and take a look at the functions. The by row function applies a lambda function to each row and returns an array of results. Now don't worry if you have no idea what this means. You will in a few moments. Scenario one shows a similar example to the previous video I mentioned. In cell F6, I will enter equals unique, and I want the unique list from my data table and the item column. So that now gives me a list of unique items. In cell G6, I want a list of all the values for that item separated by a pipe symbol. To do that, I'll type equals, and then I'll use the filter function. I want to filter the value column of my data table and I want to filter based on the item column of the data table and I want to filter where that equals the value in F6. So I'll close that bracket, commit that and that spills out those results. To get them into a single cell with a separator between each value I will use the text join function. So at the start I'll enter text join then an opening bracket the separator that I want to use is the pipe symbol. The next argument is whether I want to ignore blank cells. I'll enter that as true. And then finally, at the end, I can enter a closed bracket. I'll now commit that. And as you can see, we now get a single value where each number is separated by a pipe symbol. So now to get a value for each row, what I might do is copy down that formula. The problem is if I get a new value in my table, such as delta, my unique will expand, but my formula in column G does not expand. So I can't use this method. I also can't change F6 to F6 hash. Doing so creates an error. This is why we need to use the lambda function so that we can calculate a result for each item in our unique array. So at the start, I'll add the lambda function and then an opening bracket. I will then create a variable and I'm going to use R as a variable. It can be anything. It's just a placeholder to represent each row of cells. So R in this scenario represents a row. I'll then change cell F6 so that it picks up the row which is coming from our Lambda function. And then I'll close that bracket at the end. So now we've created a function which accepts a single argument but this won't work by itself. We need to pass in the values that we want to use with this function. There are various ways to achieve this. We're going to use the by row helper function. This function passes across an array of rows into the Lambda function and causes it to calculate for each row. So at the start, I'll enter by row and then an opening bracket. And we want to pass each row from our range of F6 hash. And then I'll close that bracket at the end. And when we commit that, it now spills and calculates correctly. If we add a new record into our table, we can see that our formula now expands automatically. Okay, now let's move on to scenario two. This is where we get to see by row in all its glory. I want to sum the values in each row of the array and then add a 20% tax rate onto each of those values. So let's build this up from the start, equals by row, then an opening bracket, and we want the values from J6 hash. 
We want to repeat this on a row by row basis. So we need to use the lambda function and we will create a variable called r and that represents each row. We'll then use the sum function on each row and multiply the result of that sum function by 1.2. We'll close the lambda, we'll close the by row, we'll then commit that and it returns a sum for each row multiplied by 1.2. So that's how we can use the by row function. There's also a by col function which works exactly the same but for columns. Now let's turn to the map function. Map applies a lambda to each cell and returns an array of results. I'll start by copying F6 and G6 into F12 and G12. And now let's change the formula. So rather than by row, we will use map. Now map works on a cell by cell basis. Therefore, I'm going to change the variable from R to C. We don't need to, but it will make it clearer that this is a cell rather than a row. And when we commit that, it provides exactly the same result because our data only has a single column. Right, now let's turn to scenario two. This will highlight the key difference between by row and map. I'll start by copying the formula from 06 into 012. I will need to update that cell reference and now we can make the same changes as we made for scenario one. At the start, we'll change by row to map. We'll also change our variable in the lambda from R to C. Now when we commit those results, they spill out in both directions. Now in this scenario, the sum function isn't really doing anything because it's only ever summing a single cell. This just shows that it's hard to create a single example that works for all scenarios, but hopefully it shows you the difference between by row and map. By row works row by row, map works on each cell. The next function we're looking at is scan. Scan applies a lambda to each cell while storing the previous result to use in subsequent calculations. And it returns an array of each calculation performed. Let's start by copying the previous formula and now let's update that formula. So rather than map, we will use scan. Scan has an additional argument at the start and that is the start value. We're going to enter an empty text string. Now scan performs a calculation for each cell, but it also stores the previous value. So we're going to use a variable of A, which is short for accumulator, which represents the previous result. We will also use a variable of V. This is short for value, and it represents the current cell that we're working with. Now in this scenario, we don't care about the previous result. So we're going to ignore the A, which is the accumulator variable, but we will use V, and we're going to replace the variable of C for V. And when we commit that, we get exactly the same result as we did for by row and for map. Now this doesn't really show off what scan can do. So let's move on to scenario number two. We'll copy that previous formula and now let's update that cell reference. Now let's make the same changes. So we will change map to scan. Our first argument will be the initial value because we're working with numbers, we'll make this a zero. We want to change the variables passed into the lambda as a for the accumulator and v for the value. And then we want to change the variable inside that sum function. And when we commit that, we get exactly the same result as map. Now, this is because we didn't use the accumulator variable. And if you remember, the accumulator is the previous result. So let's go and add this into our scan function. So inside the lambda, we want the previous result, the accumulator A, plus the sum of our current value. And now when we commit that, you see we have a running total. So that means that by row works on a row by row basis, map works on a cell basis, scan also works on each cell, but because it has an accumulator value, it means it provides the result at the end of each calculation. Now let's take a look at the reduce function. Reduce applies a lambda to each cell 
while storing the previous result to use in subsequent calculations, but it only returns the final accumulated result of that calculation. So let's copy our previous formula and update it. So let's change scan to reduce. Reduce has the same arguments as scan. It also has an accumulator and a value. And now when we commit this, we only get the last value that we received from scan. And that's because reduce returns only the last accumulated value. So if we want to get all of the rows, we need to build up an array so that the accumulated value includes all those rows. And we can do that using the vStack function. So as part of our function, we're going to vStack the accumulator, which is the previous result, and each time we want to stack on the result of the current row. So that means that each row is stacked onto the previous result until we have an array of all values. Okay, let's commit that. Now you'll notice that we have an empty row at the top. This is because we started with an empty text string. So this is included inside the V stack, but we can remove this using the drop function. So at the start, I'll enter drop, open bracket, and then at the end of that function, we want to drop one row. And now when we commit that, we get exactly the same result as by row, map, and scan. Okay, now let's turn to scenario two, and let's copy our previous formula, and then update the cell reference. So let's change scan to reduce. Now scan and reduce have the same arguments, so we can commit this, and the result that we get is exactly the same as the end result as we received for our scan function. So by row works row by row, map works on each cell, scan works on each cell, but provides an accumulated result for each calculation. Reduce works on a cell by cell basis, but provides only the final accumulated result. And that's it. That is the by row, map, scan and reduce functions. Sometimes they achieve similar things, but other times they have a specific purpose where we can use them for that specific purpose. If you haven't done so already, click there to subscribe and then you get to keep up to date with all of our content. Then click there. That's the next awesome video that you want to watch. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.